Hello, we are here today with my February favorites. I will be putting chapter markers in these videos from now on, so if there's only certain things that you want to hear me talk about, then you don't have to listen to the other stuff that you're not interested in, and you can just skip to the parts that you want to hear me talk about. As usual, I'm going to start with books. I have one book to talk about, which is The Darkness Outside Us by Elliot Schriefer, and... Okay, first, I can't fully explain what this is about. There is a huge twist in it that just what I can tell you about this book is that it is about two teenage boys, Ambrose and Kodiak, who are from like basically like warring countries, but they are on a space mission together to save Ambrose's sister. Now, the thing about the story though <laughs> is that they both wake up on the ship on its way to its destination. Uh, neither of them remember the takeoff. They were knocked out and there's a lot of stuff wrong with the ship and they have to work together to fix all the stuff on the ship so that they can get to Ambrose's sister and hopefully save her. Um, but there's some sinister stuff going on. It seems like maybe they're not the only two on the ship. And that's all I can tell you, except also that it is not at all what I was expecting. Okay, so I thought this was going to be a cute space love story with a bit of intrigue. This was an epic and devastating space adventure with a little bit of love in it. It was like, it was like repeated devastation. This book tore me to shreds. So if you would like to be torn to shreds as well, you should read this book. I can't tell you why. I can't tell you why it tore me to shreds, but it will, it, it did. <laughs> and I was thinking about this book for a really long time after reading it because there's a lot of stuff in this book that makes you think. <laughs> anyway, this book was fantastic. I read more than half of it. It was like when the, when like the twist was revealed, I read the rest of it in a day. So the next thing that I'm going to talk about is a video game and that is Uncharted 4, A Thief's End that I played on the PS4. I did not play any previous Uncharted games. I was told by people on TikTok that I did not need to play any previous games to understand or appreciate the story. I'm sure if I played the previous games, there might be a little bit of the story that I would appreciate more, but I thoroughly enjoyed Like, I loved it. I was going to say I thoroughly enjoyed it, but it was more than that. I loved it so much. <laughs> it is made by the same people who made The Last of Us games, but it's not going to tear your heart out like The Last of Us did. So, excellent. I loved that about it. <laughs> Uncharted is about treasure hunters. And this one specifically is about Nathan Drake, the main character, and some other people, who I won't say because maybe spoilers, are on a quest to find the pirate Henry Avery's treasure. Because there's lots of it. But then, of course, there's other people who are also looking for the treasure and want to get there first. And, you know, they shoot each other and stuff. <laughs> What I loved about the game was like the non-shooting gameplay. There's a lot of rock climbing in it that involves like leaping and jumping and sliding and sliding and jumping and throwing ropes while you're in the air and swinging. And I loved that about it. It was very fun trying to figure out where to go next and how to get there. It also had some really fun and sometimes complicated puzzles because it's a treasure hunt, you know, that the pirate only wants those who are worthy to find it. So there's complicated puzzles that you have to solve, which was also fun. I loved that. I also, the shooting was fine. I, <laughs> I understand there needs to be like enemies in these games in order to make the gameplay interesting. Um, absolutely, and I don't hate the shooting at all, but sometimes it's so stressful. <laughs> um, so anyway, what else did I love about Uncharted 4? The other thing that I loved about Uncharted 4 was the story. It, again, like The Last of Us games, has fantastic actors, amazing, like, cinematography, and good graphics. It's like you're watching a movie. The cutscenes were fantastic. It was so interesting and just made playing the game that much more fun because there's such a good story to go along with it. And I gotta say, when I was done playing it, I was thinking about it a lot because I missed it 
Like, I missed it like I was on a real adventure with real people who were my friends, and then our adventure was over, and they went back home, and I was back home, and we didn't talk anymore. So, I just think it's so cool that a video game can do that to you, and it just... Fantastic. I will definitely be playing this game again. I'm actually torn because I don't know if I want to play it again on this on a super easy mode So just so I can enjoy the story and the adventure again and not have any kind of stress involved Or if I want to try and play it on a harder level than what I played it on. I don't know what I would rather do No, I don't know what sounds more fun. I guess it depends on the mood that I'm in I can do either or depending on my mood and both are okay. <laughs> my next favorite is that when I played Uncharted 4 I recorded it for a playthrough and it was so much fun. My mom played it, I say played it with me, she watched, but she also was like a part of it as well because first of all, we were both talking about it as we played it, like as if you were, you know, watching a movie and talking about the movie as you're watching it. Um, and also she helped with puzzles and ideas on where to go and how to get certain places. So we like essentially played it together and it was so much fun. And I also think that our commentary is hilarious because a lot of the game revolves around heights. <laughs> And my mom, I mean, I don't like heights either, but she has a much stronger reaction to the heights in the game than I do. <laughs> and it's hilarious. <laughs> it's fantastic. I am also having so much fun editing the playthrough. For one, because I'm, like I said, I miss the game like they're my friends. And so when I'm editing the playthrough, I get to hang out with them again. And it's so much fun. And it's also just so entertaining because I get to hear mine and my mom's commentary that I didn't realize we had said while we were playing it or that I didn't realize was as funny as it is. Uh, it's also interesting because there are pieces of the story that neither of us picked up on or got, like we completely missed when we were playing it the first time because the way like you're immersed in it and like the whole action of the game as well and it kind of makes you not pay attention fully to some of the story. This happened to me when I played The Last of Us as well. There were, when I was editing my playthrough for The Last of Us Part Two, I was like, oh my God, I totally missed this when I was playing it, which I don't understand how because they're saying it and I don't, I do not remember this. <laughs> there was a lot of that happening in the editing of the playthrough for Uncharted, which is fun. In the first episode of my playthrough, we're talking about our opinion and thoughts on something that is happening. Oh, I wonder if this is what's happening when clearly it's that's what's happening because it was mentioned two minutes prior and we both missed it. <laughs> so it's really interesting um, coming across those things when I'm editing the playthrough. But anyway, I have the first f four episodes up, I believe, the first four. Um, and I'm trying to put one episode up per week. And I think there's 11. I think there's going to be 11 episodes. So... Anyway, there's that. So the next thing that I want to talk about is movies. And I'm going to start with an honorable mention. And I want to talk about it first because it goes with the stuff I just finished talking about, which is the Uncharted movie. The Uncharted movie I thought was a lot of fun. I know I wasn't expecting much from it. I wasn't expecting it to follow. I mean, I want to say any of the games, but I wouldn't know if it followed the first three games because I never played them. But I wasn't expecting it to follow any parts of the game that I would recognize. I was expecting there to be pieces of the game, like, you know, as like nods to the game and stuff like that in it. And that's basically what there was. And it was fun. I didn't think that I was going to like Tom Holland as Nate, uh, but I did actually quite enjoy him. And what I did like about the movie was that there were still some emotional aspects to it that I thought Tom Holland did a good job with. And I did appreciate that they did put some emotional stuff in it. Cause there is a little bit of emotional stuff in the game. Not, not a lot and it's not heavy or anything, but I did like that they, they did keep some of that. But what I did like about the movie was that there were parts that were very clearly inspired or pulled from the games and also the game that I played, the fourth one. Um, there were a couple scenes in it and I'm pretty sure characters who were from the previous games, I just didn't know this when I watched it because I haven't played the previous games, but there are parts I'm pretty sure taken from all the games, which is really cool. I think it's just a new story, but I do think that they were probably most heavily inspired by the story of the fourth game just because of the things that do happen in it. Like there are some scenes that are not exactly the same, but are very obviously taken from the fourth game. And I really liked that. The only thing that I did not like was there was not, I don't think any rock climbing in the movie at all. And that is like 50% of the game. So I was upset that there was no rock climbing. Why was there no rock climbing? But there was some swinging 
there was a time when they had to boost someone up onto something and there was one or two times where, you know, like they had to jump and grab onto somebody and help them come up. And then there was some like grabbing onto something and pulling themselves up with their strong upper body, but none of it was on cliff faces or mountains or anything. <laughs> but it was fun and all the nods from the game and the things that were clearly pulled from the games was a lot of fun to see. And also Nolan North, who plays Nate in the games, had a little cameo, which was very exciting. And I loved that. It was a fun movie. I would watch it again. I wanted to talk about it. <laughs> the next movie that I want to talk about is Enola Holmes. Enola Holmes is about the younger sister of Sherlock Holmes whose mother goes missing and she is on a journey to try and figure out what happened to her mother. But then she meets a nincompoop boy who kind of steers her story and her priorities in a little bit of a different direction and it was delightful. It was so wonderful. Enola Holmes was so much more than I thought it would be. I thought it was going to be a cute fun movie and it was so much more than that. It was, first of all, it was cute and it was fun. But it was just, it was so delightful and wonderful and empowering in so many ways. And also the parts about it that were delightful was the, it's not just a voiceover of Enola Holmes, like she talks to the audience a lot and I love the way that she does it. I am not always a big fan of movies that have narration, um, unless it's like, I don't know, really good narration. <laughs> but a lot of the times I feel like it's not needed. But the narration in this and the Enola Holmes talking to the camera or to the audience just added this extra depth of fun and of like humor to it and empowerment. Like there's, there's a lot about how girls and women can do basically whatever they want and that it's okay to not want to be girly or to want to be girly or to want to be both. And I loved that about it. And then the next one, Enola Holmes 2, we watched the sequel and it was just as wonderful and delightful. It had a little bit more mystery and intrigue than adventure from the first one, but still delightful. I can't tell you what it's about because spoilers, but watch both of them. They're, they were so good. And the last movie that I want to talk about is Baby Driver, which I have been wanting to see for a long time. I think I've been wanting to see it ever since I saw a trailer for, for when it came out and only just got around to seeing it the, in February. And it was so, and again, much more than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was just going to be a fun action movie about a getaway driver. And it is so much more than that. It is about a getaway driver who is doing it because he is basically forced to, because if he doesn't, his family's like going to get murdered. So he ha he has to, he got himself into trouble when he was younger. And now he has to be the getaway driver for this big Kevin Spacey's character. <laughs> so the car chases and the action are a lot of fun, but it is also a lot deeper than that because this getaway driver does not want to be doing this, is not comfortable with what he's doing. He likes driving and he's good at driving, but he doesn't want to be a part of everything else that's going on. And it's about him trying to get out of it. And it was really good. I think that's all I've got for you today. So I hope you enjoyed and let me know your favorite things from February. Have a good day. Bye.